that one, man, and uh, you know, when you have to go to a split call like that, and you, you're not quite sure, what are your thoughts on that? It probably feels like an eternity in a few seconds. Yeah, well, I took the fight on two weeks' notice. Uh, guy's super long with a ton of power, counter striker. So I couldn't just go rushing in there. I had to kind of probe, probe false starts a lot. The volume was kind of low, but man, I just felt a couple of those punches, and I, I realized quickly that's uh, that's why a lot of people don't make it out of the fights with him. So I had to be a little careful. I know it was close the first two rounds. Going to the third, my coaches told me, hey, we got to get this one. Uh, a lot of crowd support out there, especially at the beginning. Going to the third round, I felt it felt felt awesome to be fighting in my hometown, kind of pushed me that third round to keep grinding. I was able to win that third round. I think that's what gave me the fight right there. How did it feel walking out, man? Did you feel that pop from everybody? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, I've been all around the world. Most of the time, I'm the other guy. Yeah. And, uh, man, I saw so many familiar faces, and, and just the excitement when I was getting uh, announced was incredible. Like, so, what kind of familiar faces? Like, are you seeing people like you went to high school with or weird things like that? Obviously, the gym support. So I called sure, yeah. Pura Vida with Jake Clip. Uh, you know, a lot of up-and-comers, everybody was showing up tonight, I saw a lot of familiar teammates, and then, yeah, friends, family, people I went to high school, all sorts of people came out of the woodwork, uh, you know, giving me Facebook messages during the week saying that they were going to come in from out of state to, to go to this fight and stuff. It was crazy. You were, uh, you, were, you were a pretty big underdog. I don't know if you look at that kind of stuff. You were like three to one dog. You know, I used to look at that, that stuff, and I don't look at any of that stuff anymore. Comments, all these, you know, trolls and stuff on the internet nowadays, anybody can say whatever they want. Hey, I'm, a, I'm the one that's going out there and exposing myself for y'all to see. And uh, I'm the one that's putting it on the line every day and going out there. So I'm not going to worry about what other people say. I don't even look at the How much better would it feel, though, than to, to, to know that? Hey, now that I know it, thank you. Uh, yeah, and he's a, he's a good prospect, man. I felt him. I felt him in the clinch. I felt him on the ground. Like, it kind of landed like that modified half guard position. I don't like to just stuff that leg down and start passing right away. This kid knew his stuff everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to take a little bit of time off. You know, I don't want to go rushing into fights after taking some damage and stuff. I want to make sure I get better. I want to make sure my brain heals, all that kind of stuff, right? So I was in no rush to get back. And then it became time where, okay, I'm ready to take that next fight. My manager and I were thinking maybe like February, but with the UFC coming in December, I really wanted to get on this. The card was already kind of filling up. We saw that uh, there was a welterweight fight, Eric Koch, you know, for whatever reason, coming up to that weight class and has also been a little inactive. So I wanted to stay ready and, uh, you know, my team, uh, you know, over at Pura Vida, we were keeping a close eye on things and just making sure that they were out they were getting me ready in case something came up. We've had a lot of fighters with starting the show. We had a lot of fighters with big fights coming up. I gotta be on the mats and help them get ready for their fights. Guys fighting for LFA and, and UFC and stuff like that. So I'm always on the mats, I'm always uh, staying semi ready and if the call came in I can take it. Do you have any idea why you didn't know you have your own time because also you get hurt? I have no idea. Did you identify Eric Coke as like early on as somebody like, hey man, this might be a guy that yeah, might be our way I, you're always keeping an eye on the yeah. weight classes, right? And then I see, okay, there's a Walter Weight matchup, and it's Eric Cole, who was a 45er, then 55, now 70. And the fact that he's been, in, you know, in and not as active, you just look at the data. And so I thought, man, I, I better stay ready a little bit. You know, I got to keep my weight in a good area. I'm going to be on the mats more than normal. And uh, sure enough, that's what, that's what happened. Uh, my manager called me and said, you guys called it. Uh, Eric's got to pull out, so it's your fight. And of course, I was going to say yes. I, I even forgot who the opponent was. I mean, I was just like, yeah, I don't care who it is. I'm fighting him. What's uh, what's your two, two, uh, 2019 need to look like for you now? Now, you know, coming off a big one like this, the kind of the emotional fact of, of fighting at home, taking it on short notice, pulling an upset. What is uh, yeah, what is the that was my uh, that was my 30th sanctioned fight. Uh, I feel like I've got the experience now. I'm turning 32 next week. I feel like with what we do, this is the prime of my athletic career. You know, these next couple of years, I really want to push and keep moving up the ladder and reach my full potential. So I want to, I want an active, uh, this, I want an active 2019. To see where it takes me. You love the win, but the small amount of time, the back row. I've taken a lot of short notice fights. I think uh, all four of my UFC wins were taken on three weeks or less notice. So. I don't know when the pressure's on. Also, another time when maybe my job was in jeopardy. Fuck, show up. You're taking this fight for the So important to you. You're taking this fight for I don't know. Well, I mean, 
a lot of variables there to consider, hard to say. But with what was happening, I, I said yes, I had to. Just out of curiosity, you said this was your 30th century play in the ballpark. How many unsanctioned plays have you played? Maybe double, but none in the last 10 years, so that's what's important. I've grown up a little bit. Are you it's a good outlet for those of you that maybe have some issues with so that. So what would your record be in unsanctioned plays? <laughs> Undefeated, of course. There you go. Good answer. Right? A lot to zero. Good are you, answer. Are you a superstitious guy? I mean, you said that anytime you take a short notice fight, you've won. If you have, a, have to have a, have a ten week camp next time, I, I grew up playing crap. baseball actually, and baseball was like my favorite sport growing up. Pretty superstitious, you know. Like sometimes if I ate a worm before a game, we'd win. So then I keep eating worms before games, like that kind of shit. Like I used to be. So I, I try to cut all that out now. I don't look at streaks or what kind of socks I was wearing that week when I won or you know none of that stuff. I just I knew, hey, it's game time. I, you got to show up, you know. And that extra little bit, you know, that third round, you got to grind. You got the crowd support. Um, I felt like I had to, I had to give that extra little inch from the walk to my team, and uh, that, that little stuff helps. Your second base. What position are you playing? I'm, I'm going second base. I was a uh, pitcher, shortstop. Pitcher. So you were the go-to guy. Those are two, usually the two best players. The position is the best players. Yeah, when you're a kid, you know, that's what they kind of yeah. stick, stick the better guys at, I suppose. Any questions, guys? All right. Oh, good. Thank you, guys. All right, thanks.